25 cookies! Hey, I'm just about to share with you the best cookie recipe of all time. So if you want to learn how to make walnut cookies at home, then just keep watching. Hey, it's so good to see you again. You're just in time for another health, beauty and lifestyle video. If we're just meeting, my name is Lynette and I'm all about being beautiful and healthy naturally. So I usually talk about eating well and eating foods that'll help grow your gut buddies so you look good and feel amazing from the inside out. So if that's your cup of tea too, then I strongly recommend that you hit that subscribe button and ring that bell so you'll be the first to know whenever I upload new content. In the meanwhile, you're most welcome to browse my library of videos and check out all the links and show notes down below when you can. But for now, let's dive in. We're going to be making walnut cookies today, primarily from walnuts, of course. So I thought, why don't we make some walnut milk first and then use that as in the pulp to make those cookies? So in case you missed a previous episode where we talked about how to make almond milk at home, here's a quick recap. Because I'm using 250 grams of walnuts for my cookies, I'll be able to make two liters worth of nut milk today. I'll explain a little bit more in my notes below, so check them out after this, okay? Meanwhile, let's fill the vegan milker with one liter of hot distilled water. Slowly but surely pop in the filter attachment, then add 100 grams of walnut to the filter attachment. Blitz for one minute and you're done. Strain it to separate the milk from the pulp. Repeat with the remaining 150 grams of walnuts to make the second batch of nut milk. Store the milk in the fridge after it has cooled sufficiently and then we can move on to making the cookies. But say if you want to save the pulp and make these cookies another time, then do check out my previous video to learn how to store them in the freezer. I'll stick the link on screen and down below right after this but moving right along, here I'm using a basic food processor and I'm adding the walnut pulp to it along with the dates and cinnamon and nutmeg and pink salt and then I'm going to blitz until I get a nutty buttery soft cookie dough. Then instead of using the oven today, I'm going to turn on my dehydrator. Nope, it's not new. I've had it for years. In fact, I bought it to replace my microwave, which was destroying all the nutrients in whatever foods I put in there. I'll explain more in a bit why I'm choosing to use a dehydrator over my regular oven as well. But for now, I'm going to add scoops of the cookie dough onto the tray and you can line them up close together, but make sure they're not touching each other. Now, after you've scooped the cookie dough onto the tray, use the back of a fork to flatten and decorate each cookie before for placing it in the dehydrator. And then just leave it and let it do its magic. For how long? We just leave it to dehydrate for four to six hours at 118 degrees. Just in case you're wondering why I'm using the dehydrator in favor of the good old oven, great question by the way. That's because the dehydrator preserves food naturally by locking in all the essential enzymes, nutrients, fibers, and flavors. So you get maximum nutrition and minimum waste. Halfway through, flip them over and let them dry out directly on the screens to speed up the drying time. When they've cooled sufficiently, store them in an airtight container and try to finish them within the week. But looking at the way things are, we're likely to finish them up in no time at all. And that's it guys. That's how to make walnut cookies at home. And I can tell you that it's the best cookie recipe of all time. Here we've used all natural ingredients, so they'll make a great snack. You can even have them for breakfast as well. They should still be a little soft, but not sticky at all. I hope you give it a go and if you found this useful, like it and share it with your friends. Till next week, you have a beautiful day.